Are you new to Diamond Dynasty? I'll admit there's a lot to do in Diamond Dynasty and every year it gets a little bit more complicated, at least for beginners. I've played for about 20 hours since launch, I know. That's a lot, I have no life, it's fine. But I finally have a grasp on how the new content structure in Diamond Dynasty works. Seasons are here, we had sets and seasons last year. It's a whole new world in Diamond Dynasty, but I finally found the perfect way to get you started. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the team that I have right now after 20 hours of grinding. I've exclusively grinded offline. I played a couple BR runs on stream that didn't really go well. That's neither here nor there. After offline grinding, we've gotten ourselves a beefy, beefy team, and you can do this too exactly the same way, I promise. My name's Kenny, and if you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I will be uploading MLB The Show 24 content all year long. We're talking three to five videos per week. You're not gonna wanna miss any of it, so make sure you hit that sub button. All right, we start first with a look at the squad, right? As you can see, I've got at least an 89 at every position. Right now, Team Affinity is capped at 89 overall, and so I've got a good team. A couple things I wanna point out, they're a little bit out of the ordinary for some people who are maybe constructing their teams right now who are new to Diamond Dynasty. I completed the Yankees Live Series collection. I'm a Yankee fan. I've done this with completely no money put into the game. All I did was grind out enough subs to purchase Aaron Judge, Garrett Cole, Juan Soto, and all the other Yankees. I did not pull any of those diamonds. So by doing that, I was able to collect it and get Bernie Williams to play center field. That's why I have Bernie there. But every other card you see here, all of the cards, grinding from Team Affinity, we have the Cornerstone Captain, I could have equipped the Cornerstone Captain and had some fun and showed you guys a cool team, but I'm talking about right now just the best cards that you can get for the grind. I've got an all-diamond rotation. The bullpen needs work, but I think everybody's bullpen needs work early in the year. Don't concern yourself with that. Concern yourself with the pitching. We have five very viable starters, and we've got a full team of high-ish diamonds relative to where we are in the year right now. There are going to be higher diamonds, of course, later on, but relative to where we are in the year, full diamond squad. So how did I go about this, you ask? There is a method to how all of this works. You are free to play this game in any way you choose. Do not feel beholden to what anybody tells you. You wanna boot up the game for the first time and go play events, go ahead. You wanna go to BR, you wanna play ranked, do whatever you want. But if your focus early on is getting the most viable cards in the most efficient way possible to then go into ranked, this is what you need to do. The first thing you do when you queue into Diamond Dynasty, you're going to want to go to play, you're going to want to go to single player modes, and you're going to want to go to showdown. I need you to complete all three of these showdowns. Each one will do something different for you. The starter showdown is going to help you make progress in your starter program, which is going to get you Sandy Alcantara at the end. Your Team Affinity showdown is going to get you vouchers towards progress in Team Affinity. We'll talk about programs in a second. Then you're going to do the Spring Breakout Showdown all the way working up towards 89 Dylan Cruz, who you guys saw playing left field for me. What is a program? Glad you asked. Go to programs, other programs. Programs are a way to earn players, earn stubs, earn XP. As you can see here, if you do the starter one, you can get all the way to Sandy Alcantara at the end. Multiple ways to do all sorts of programs. You can go through this yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. But after you do those showdowns, go to this programs menu and start doing moments. All of these programs have moments. Moments are just singular moments in time, hence they're called moments, and they help you progress through the path. Why do we do things in that order? Showdowns, then moments. Or you could do moments, then showdown. Either way, it doesn't matter. I do showdowns first, then I do moments. Why do you do them in that order? Because the big thing that you're going to have to do to make massive progress in all sorts of programs, Team Affinity and otherwise, is Conquest. Conquest is like a turn-based, um, uh, Stratego, Risk-style conqueror game. And basically, the goal, I'll show you the Nation of Baseball map, is to fill up this entire map. As you can see, I'm about 50% done in terms of territories. I'm about 33% done in terms of teams I have to beat. There are a lot more teams on the East Coast, uh, and I gotta clean up the Central area a little bit. But every single program has program-specific, player-specific missions tied to them. So we do showdowns and moments first to unlock the players where we can then take them into the conquest to get 
the things we need to get the progress we need to make. Let me give you a specific example. Guys like Giancarlo Stanton above my head, Brian Dozier, Yasmani Grandal, Evan Longoria. Those are all bosses from Team Affinity. And Team Affinity bosses have like cumulative stats you need to get to continue to unlock more XP and, and reward path stuff. Just do it this way. I promise it makes sense. Let me go show you specifically what I'm talking about. So let's take Giancarlo Stanton, for example. He plays in the NL East. We're going to go to programs. We're going to go to Team Affinity. We're going to go to the NL East. Look right here under repeatable missions. PXP with Marlins. You can only get that by using Marlins players. Giancarlo Stanton fits that bucket. There are also single player missions like RBIs with National League East players on All-Star. If you play on All-Star in Conquest, you can knock this out really, really easily. Total bases with National League East bosses. Giancarlo Stanton is a National League East boss. If you get 20 total bases, you get 15,000. That's behind my face. Team affinity points. And guess what? It's repeatable. You can just keep doing it. So if you want to grind things in like the most ultra efficient way possible, let's say you're focusing again solely on the National League East, you should build a lineup entirely of National League East players, a pitcher who's from the National League East, and just mercilessly destroy the computer in conquest mode. This is going to be the guaranteed fastest way to fill up all your all your progress you got to make, get things done, unlock these cards and build a team. As you can see, I've already finished the AL East and the AL Central. I'm 77% of the way on the NL East, 48% on the NL Central, and we'll focus on the West less. They're not as, not as important to me at this current moment. Once you start unlocking some of these cards, you can go into collections. You can go to the season collections, season one, and you can lock in 30 of those cards for 89 overall Craig Biggio, which I have done. Craig Biggio... Not my favorite, necessarily. He'll probably find a spot on my bench because he can absolutely crush lefties. But you can keep doing collections. Eventually, you get a quality lefty in John Franco. And then they'll fill this in a little bit more as more cards come out. And we can work our way up to getting some of the best cards in the game. All you have to do is grind the right way. Now, let's say during your grind, you have found that you're starting to get bored of offline play. I feel that. I've been there. You can take those same cards we were just talking about, the National League East, and take them into something like events. It's online, so you'll get more PXP for everything you achieve. Plus, you can still make progress in Team Affinity. Because if you go back to Team Affinity, let's go to just AL East this time because I clicked on it first, there are multiplayer missions. You can do all of those productivity related things on multiplayer and you'll get more points and you'll have to actually do less stuff because you're, you're playing multiplayer online. The whole goal of Diamond Dynasty of an ultimate team mode is to build your squad. Kind of seems like we've lost some of that in the past couple years with the way content has been structured. But this year, team building is more important than it's been in a while. You really have to make strategic decisions. Not every card is boosted out the gills. You have to kind of play the way you want to play and learn which guys you're good with. But the only way to do that is to unlock the cards you want. There are efficient ways to do it. You can also just kind of play anything you want at any point you want, and eventually you will earn progress towards these things naturally. There's no right or wrong way to play. You can do this however you so choose. This is just how I've always done it. And listen, within 20 hours, I've already completed the Yankees collection, which is one of the most expensive in the game. It works because you're getting so many stubs and packs and XP just by going through all these reward paths, the showdowns, the conquests, they all give you rewards for playing them. That's kind of why I do that early on in the year. The other thing you can do for free cards is go play storylines. I've yet to play Negro League Season 2. I'm halfway through the Derek Jeter storyline, and the only reason I did halfway was because I wanted to play long enough to unlock Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill is my favorite baseball player of all time, and I have him one of one at Parallel 3. So... Are we going to get the 101 P5? I don't know. But there are alternative ways to get cards as well. 85s, though, is what they are. So they're not going to be the best of what's available right now. However, if you want to sit through a nice story, watch some cutscenes, do some easy moments, you can get a bunch of 85s to throw on your team pretty fast. I remember my first year of Diamond Dynasty. It was complicated. I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know there was like a legit strategy to going about this. But that's why I like making these videos. I know I'm not the only person making these videos, but... I want to remove the barrier to entry to all sorts of parts of this game. I want everyone to, first of all, enjoy it how they want. But if they do want like a more calculated path, 
I want that to be very clear for them. I want them to know how to attack these things so everybody can ultimately have the best time they can playing this game. That'll do it for this video. If you ever have any more questions about Diamond Dynasty, please put them in the comments down below. I'm not doing a no money spent series per se. I've just always mostly played no money spent, so I've never felt the need to create a series out of it. Plus, there are a lot of series like that that already exist. But if there's ever specific things you want me to talk about, like how to do a showdown, how to best strategize conquest, I can probably make those. So just let me know. And if there's enough demand, I'll give it a shot. Thank you guys for making it to the end. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. Let's dominate the YouTube algorithm. It's going to be a big year for MLB The Show 24, and I'm glad you want me to be a part of it. So see you guys next time.